What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Patrick here. Moving on to the next question, we have two inequalities that we have to solve. So let's start with this one here. So we got 7x plus 27 is less than negative 5x plus 3. So what you want to do with inequalities, like I've discussed before, is you want to just isolate for the x like you would with an equation. However, with inequalities, in my opinion, it's best to bring all the x's to the side where they'll be positive where the ending, where the simplified leading coefficient will be positive. Because then if you have to divide by a negative, you have to worry about switching the sign, et cetera, et cetera. So in this case, I would bring this negative 5x over. So we'd have 7x plus 5x on the left side. Then we could bring this 27 over. So we'd have 3 minus 27. 7x plus 5x, that gives us 12x. And then 3 minus 27, that gives us negative 24. And then to isolate for this x, we divide by 12. So we'd have x is less than negative 2. So that is our answer for this inequality here. We could have also brought the 7x over to the other side, brought this over, uh, brought this 3 over to the uh, left side. And then we would have negative 12x on this side. And then when we divide by negative 12, we have to flip this sign. But we would end up getting the same solution anyway. So x is less than negative 2. Now, if you want to show this on a number line, let's say here is 0. Well, negative 2 would be over here. And because it's less than negative 2, it's not inclusive of neg uh, negative 2. So there would be an open dot there. And then we would just put an arrow that goes this way, right? If it was inclusive of negative two like that, then this dot would be close, but it's not. So it's just an open dot. Okay, moving on to part B, notice how we have a double inequality here. So four X minus 13 is greater than or equal to negative three X plus eight, which is greater than or equal to two X minus 10. Now, double inequalities, different ways to do them. The way I like to do them is I like to look at each of the individual inequalities separately. So I'll write out this 4x minus 13 greater than or equal to negative 3x plus 8. So that's this portion of the inequality. And then this portion I'll write out here. So I'll have negative 3x plus 8 greater than or equal to 2x minus 10. And then I just like to solve both of these inequalities separately and then combine the solutions at the end. So for this one, I'll bring this 3x over. So 4x, this negative 3x becomes positive 3x. Then I'll have 8 plus 13. So I'll have 7x is greater than or equal to 21. Divide both sides by 7. So x has to be greater than or equal to 3. So that's the solution for this part. And then here, I'll um, bring this negative 3x over to the right side, bring this negative 10 over to the left side. So I'll have 8 plus 10 greater than or equal to 2x plus 3x. So 18 is greater than or equal to 5x. Divide both sides by 5. So that means x has to be less than or equal to 18 over 5. And 18 over 5 in decimals, that is 3.6. So notice if we combine these, that is a possible solution. X has to be greater than or equal to 3, but less than or equal to 3.6, right? So there's a possible solution for this inequality. So if we combine both of these, basically x has to be greater than or equal to 3, but less than or equal to 18 over 5. And if we show that on a number line, so let's say zeros right here, this would be 3, this would be 18 over 5. At 3 and at 18 over 5, it would be solid dots because it's inclusive of those endpoints. And we would just fill the middle end. So all the x values here between 3 and 18 over 5, inclusive of both of those, 
of possible solutions for this inequality. Now, as an additional remark, what if we got, instead of 18 over 5, let's just pretend that we got 2 here. So x has to be greater than or equal to 3, but here x has to be less than or equal to 2. What would be the solution if we combine them? Well, notice that that's not possible. You can't have an x value that's greater than or equal to 3 and less than or equal to 2. So if you've got both of these with these separate inequalities and it doesn't make sense, then the answer would be no solution. All right? So just be careful with that. Sometimes you may get solutions for double inequalities that just don't work, right? That don't make sense. This would be one example. But since we got 18 over 5, then it is a possible solution, right? x has to be greater than or equal to 3, but less than or equal to 3.6. So there is a portion of the x values that will make this double inequality work, but also be on the lookout for double inequalities that have no solutions.